Two professional travel writers have each been asked to produce a piece about Exmouth Market, a street in central London. Charlotte Hindle, author of several guides for Lonely Planet, is writing an entry for a guidebook. Paul Gogarty, author of The Coast Road, is writing a more literary piece, part of a travelogue. Though they are visiting the same place on the same day, the results are very different. I'm going to write an overview of the area, so you know what, what the buzz is. Then we get on to the really nice, more glamorous section of uh, researching a travel guidebook, which is looking at the sites and the activities. And then I'm going to be looking at the real practical information of how do you get up to Exmouth Market, how do you get away. I'm so happy that we've got this. We've got a blue plaque up here. Joseph Grimaldi, and I know he was a clown. Now this gives me my boxed text. A boxed text is like a, it's, it's a story that doesn't quite fit into the format of a travel guidebook, but it's something of real interest about the area. This is Cafe Kick, um, and this is in the middle of Exmouth Market, and it really is, it's a lovely little find. I just want every, what's our business card I could take this? Yes, yeah, sure. Some top tips for writing a travel guidebook. First of all, I'd say that you need to, everything that you write about needs to be well researched and it needs to be absolutely accurate. You also, though, need to conjure up a good sense of place, but you need to do that in the minimum of words. You also need to give an opinion that the people who are reading what I write, they want to know what I think because, because travel guidebook authors have they've traveled the world and so they can make good judgments. Put yourself in the shoes of the traveller. What's it going to be like for that traveller when they've just arrived somewhere? What is it that they're going to want to know? I've got everything I need. I'm off now to write up. Contrary to its name, Exmouth Market is not a market with street stalls and horse hawkers, but a pedestrian passage packed with fashionable bars, restaurants, coffee houses, patisseries and delicatessens. It has its own website, its own theatre company and is popular with a youthful in-crowd looking for great places to wine, dine and shop. What do you think of when you think about a market? I think of something which takes place maybe once a week. I thought it was really, really important to say right from the beginning but that, that that isn't the case here. So I said, contrary to its name, Exmouth Market is not a market. I've used a little bit of alliteration here. I've used the horse hawkers and I've also used the pedestrianised passage packed. Now, you don't want to use too much alliteration, I don't think, because it can, it's, it's a tiny bit naff sometimes, but also it's, it's, it's quite nice in moderation, I guess, like anything. Uh, and it's quite nice when you start off a piece. So in a very, very few words, I think we've got the spirit of the place. People know what they're going to get when, when they arrive. Surrounded by an excellent network of transport options, if you can use this adjective to describe anything pertaining to transport in London, that's in brackets obviously, uh, Exmouth Market is easy to get to whether you come by train, taxi, underground or bus. Because with travel guidebooks you are always trying to give practical information, you're trying to give detail, you're trying to give facts, there isn't a lot of room to go off into you know, a nice fanciful world. Uh, you, you have to present this information in, in a light way. People don't want to think they're reading a textbook actually. And one way that you can do that is to inject a little bit of humour into what you're writing. I just hope that they'll, there'll be a little sort of wry smile from the readers maybe, that would be nice. Let's have a look at the pie and eel shop, which is in the eating section. Pop in here for a piece of history. This place has been run by the same lady for the last 40 years and sells only pie and mash or eels and mash. Spotlessly clean with white tiling throughout, it's like eating in your bathroom. The menu might not be to everyone's taste. Your scooped mounds of mash might remind you of school dinners, but this is a slippery, East End experience not to be missed. It took me a while to write this. You have this idea in your mind 
uh, um, but quite often it's, it's difficult to put it down on paper to get the, the, the proper words. And I was thinking about, it's, you know, it's like a bathroom, it's got the tiling. Shall I say something in there about how I could have felt like I could take a shower in there? Or, you know, how do I, how do I get this, this feel across? Um, and in the end, I did just decide to use that same simile. It's, it, it's like eating in your bathroom. I like the way that slippery and slippery East End experience sort of, um, it, it, it rolls off your tongue. It sounds really quite nice, but then also, I mean, it, it's a little bit, it's eel-like, isn't it, really? I've written about Café Kick. At this Taverna-style bar, it's not only the beer and the cocktails that give you a kick, but the entertainment too. Three football tables jostle with the punters for floor space, and there's another one bolted to the wall. This is a good, fun place with a continental feel and loud Latin American style music that attracts a young party crowd. If you're sitting in reserve with time for refreshment, try their hearty and very reasonably priced organic Spanish food. And throughout the cafe kick section, I've tried to refer all the, term, all the time to, to, to football. Uh, so I'm saying that um, uh, with, the, with the happy hour, uh, you can celebrate uh, home and away goals. Or I'm saying that if you're sitting in reserve and you have time for refreshment. Going back now here, um, I would probably cut out very. A writer is always editing their work and we're always trying to get rid of extraneous words uh, because something that's too wordy is not well written. As a clown, Grimaldi was famous for his makeup. He always appeared with a large red triangle painted on each cheek. So popular was his character that all clowns eventually adopted the red cheeks. A tradition continued to this day. And, as if this wasn't enough, he also invented the tradition of audiences singing in pantomime. Oh no, he didn't. Oh yes, he did. I was trying to get into the pantomime feel of things, into the, sort of the, the harlequinade um, um, feel of things, um, and again, to end up strongly. Ending strongly is quite important because what is it that you are going to remember ultimately from, from what you have um, uh, read in terms of travel guidebook or any other form of, of travel writing, really? Well, I'm here in Exmouth Market today because I'm working on a new book, a travelogue, unlike a guidebook, where you maybe buy that guidebook before you go somewhere because you want the recommendations. With a travelogue, they're going to try to translate for you the experience of what it's like being in that place. So I intend walking along and uh, taking some more notes and trying also maybe to find someone who has got a bit of history here. Supermarkets became available. My great-grandfather was a preacher. Before that was a church, he was, when it was a spa chapel, spa fields chapel. Do you remember anything he Well, no, I only, I only have the photograph where he was, um, that was him. Really Thanks for your time. You're welcome. That's very kind. I guess the main thing I'm trying to get as I'm walking up and down the street are lots and lots of details, smells, sounds. Just opening that door a second ago, going in the pie and mash shop, and you get that lovely waft of smells that, of course, you can never get on TV. Uh, all the details, little things, flowers, the tattoo shop. As I go along, there's been 101 things that I've jotted down, and probably I'll, I might only use a quarter of them, but you've got then the material and then you can mix it and see what works and what doesn't. I guess my uh, top tips would be, it's like a novel, you've got to tell a story. And so rather than just talking about buildings, I definitely would start with some action, starting with something that's going on. A fight would be nice if one could break out. You need to think a bit about what tense you want to use, present or past. I use the present tense a lot because I think it makes a big impact that you absolutely get the reader there now. Well, I think I've got all the notes I need. All I've got to do now is start the writing.
Sammy was standing inside his white tent, absently dreaming of the cracked dry earth of Ghana stretching in front of him beneath the deep blue sky. He stirred the pot, releasing into the air the heady aroma of pimentos, aubergine and pungent spices. One pot, please, the boy in front of me demanded, thrusting out his dinner money in the palm of his hand. I was waiting impatiently in line behind the boy and was tempted to snatch his pot, it smelt so good. This was Exmouth Market in the heart of London where Ghana, along with seemingly every other country, has relocated to sell its wares. You're creating something that draws the reader in. That's what the key thing is. So here I'm using a character, Sammy, and I'm also using a bit of a shock factor. It opens up and in fact it could be there's a setting in Africa somewhere of a novel as I say and then suddenly you've got this shock thing you're actually in London you're in Exmouth Market and so we've also got conversation we've also got the the author himself got an element of the exotic here you've got the sense of smell now as well not just vision so the kind of things that are cooking, pimentos, aubergine, pungent spices, this kind of aroma, getting our taste buds going. Uh, so you're trying to bring all the, the, the senses alive. Outside Sammy's tent, white snowflakes the size of butterflies drifted down beside a reward sign attached to an old gas lamp that offered £200 for the return alive of a lost tabby named Bertie. What we're doing here, it's almost like um, film. It's like a cinematic sweep down the street where we're picking up little details because we want to say certain things about them. And then I guess what's very, very important is imagery. As in poetry, we try to paint pictures with words. One strong image, for me, is worth 200 words of description or waffle. But that Snowflakes the size of butterflies. We've all seen the cabbage white butterflies. That idea is a nice strong image. Paints a picture. Then finally, I want to make some bigger statement about the importance of markets and this particular market to London. Markets have existed in this country for over a thousand years and are still where you can catch a glimpse of the soul of a community. This is only about 300 words, and it's just to give a kind of flavour. We're trying to create, though, to bring everything alive, all the senses, the smell, the sight, the sound, conversation going on, snippets here, things we read, things in the window. So all your senses are alive, and you're trying to paint this picture as clearly as you can. We are informing people. We're telling them that there is Exmouth Market. What we're doing is we're really trying to bring it alive. So it's an armchair journey. The travel pages of a newspaper and a travel log book, compare that to a guidebook. They have very, very different functions and purposes. And really the function and the purpose is always what defines how you write it what you include, what you exclude, and the way you go about writing it.